Hey there, Barrys. Welcome to the support 14.5 patch notes and tier list. And as always, these tier lists are dedicated to people that are in unranked all the way up to around about mid to high emerald. So if you're in any of those ranks, this should help you out. And we do these tier lists every two weeks for every single patch. So if this is something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe. And every time there's a tier list, you'll get notified. Uh, just a quick like side notes here. Uh, apologies for not having uh, support videos on the channel for the last few days. Uh, I was taking part in a riot competition where you basically had to get pentacles um, and I couldn't do that as support. So yeah, I've got a video coming on that real soon, hopefully in the next few days. Uh, having to spend probably about 20 to 30 hours of editing, I think, on that one. So I'll uh, hopefully it's a good one and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, but yeah, enough of me. Back onto the, uh, the tier list itself. And the patch notes. So nerfs going in, there are a few nerfs to support. We've got the brand nerf, we've got a Maokai nerf, Senna nerf, and we have a minor Seraphine buff. We've also got some item nerfs coming to support and one buff. So Celestial Opposition is getting slightly nerfed, and we've got Solstice Slay being slightly nerfed too, and then Dream Maker is being slightly buffed for it. Enchanters, slight readjustment, but overall is a slight buff. All right, let's get into it. So we have Brand. So Brand, uh, quite controversially, has always generally been quite good in solo queue. I think Zyra and Brand have always been battling out as kind of like number one AP mage support. Brand um, is getting picked on this time, Mendel Zyra. So I think Zyra got picked on a little bit. Uh, Zyra's win rate is still very, very high. Um, Brand in particularly Bronze, I think, had higher win ratio than Zyra. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. They're just picking a brand for no reason in particular. I mean, they both need to be picked on. They're both very strong. But it's just like it's weird that it's just brand this time. But anyway, quite significant nerfs actually on his ultimate. So if you look at it, it's damage per hit. So if you don't know, brand's ultimate can bounce off champions five times. So damage per hit, for example, on the one point could be up to 500 damage. Um, and then taking away 25 damage per bounce from the second point in ultimate is potentially minus 125 damage on the ultimate. So it's quite a significant change there. Uh, we've also got a eyelash in my eye that I'm trying to get out, and it is in my way. Um, <laughs> and 50 damage knocked off of the last point on the ultimate. So yeah, significant damage reduction on his ultimate, and also on top of that, cooldown uh, increase on his ultimate too. So in those big team fights, Brand might not have his ultimate up, and it won't do as much damage. So, is he still going to be strong? Yes. Is this a significant nerf? Yes. So, yeah, we see how he does, but I think he'll still be like okay overall. I think he'll still have a positive win rate above 50%. We'll see how much it actually does hit him, though. Going down into Maokai. So, quite controversially, also, um, he's been doing quite well particularly in high ELO right now. Uh, if you don't know, Freak, the kind of balanced design person, um, recently hit Grandmaster as support playing Maokai. And he kind of joked that Maokai uh, nerfs have been cancelled. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd add that. It's just kind of a fun little thing. <laughs> uh, his movement speed has been reduced by 5, which is uh, no laughing matter. And then W is also being increased by 1 second. Uh, also, Solstice Slate is being nerfed, so this is going to impact Maokai as well. Are these nerfs? Yes. Uh, it's going to make it harder for him to engage, particularly between levels 1 and 5, but they're not really touching his ultimate. So his ultimate, I feel like, is the strongest part of his kit by far in terms of engage. So the fact that his ultimate hasn't been touched, um, I don't mean so. I don't think this will actually impact him a massive amount. Yes, his win rate will go down slightly, but I still feel like he's going to be a decent engage support compared to some of the other weaker ones, really, that have been weak for quite some time, like Nautilus, for example. Going down into more notes, we have Senna. So Senna's Q is being uh, reduced on the AD ratio from 50% to 40%. That's primarily because she is deemed too strong in the AD carry role, so that's affecting support. Uh, the real reason why that Senna AD carry is probably stronger than support is because items are too strong right now. And if you're playing AD carry over support, you're going to be generating, in theory, more gold. So 
uh, because items, in my opinion, are kind of broken right now in terms of power, they're, they're too strong. Uh, and that's the case for a lot of items in League, particularly carry items. So, yeah, if you're able to buy carry items, you're going to be stronger than you, what you should normally be in like previous seasons. So, kind of showing on Senna because support Senna isn't really doing very well, but AD carry Senna is uh, for some reason doing really, really well. And it's just purely because of item power, in my opinion. So, just kind of really showcases and highlights how bad the balancing, balancing overall on items is compared to actual champion power. Um, honestly, like it feels like all item power should be nerfed by like twenty percent, on particularly on mid lane AD carry and tank items. So, yeah, that's my hot take. Seraphine, uh, AP carry Seraphine is being nerfed. They think AP carry Seraphine is OP. I know Seraphine's a controversial pick here. I know Sarah Slay or whatever. Uh, you guys go on about <laughs> whatever you zoomers talk about. Um, but yeah, it carries Seraphine has always been a thing uh, and been very popular. Whenever people have asked me about Seraphine, I've always suggested if you want to play Seraphine, she slays in the AP carry role, not the support role. She's pretty undercooked in the uh, in the support role. So they are looking to buff elements of her support while nerfing AP carry, which admittedly is pretty hard for them to do, but I think they actually managed to kind of do it. So, base stats reduced um, on nothing really. So, let me start again really. Movement speed increased by 5. That's quite a significant buff. Mana growth here going down per level, but the mana regeneration going up means that um, she can poke a little bit more in those very early levels. Uh, base AD going down, which basically affects auto attacks, but... Um, which will affect slightly because as you're using abilities, your auto attack range doesn't get does get increased with the stage presence. Um, so we'll see how much it really impacts the auto attack damage there coming through. Um, but on the whole, I don't think it's going to have a massive effect. It's just going to make it harder to last it. And it's the same thing with a lot of uh, the stuff coming down here too. There's no amplification now on minions and things like that. So the Q missile speed has been increased. Um, I don't know what that looks like, but that sounds pretty significant speed and it's going to be hard. It's, it's already quite hard to dodge a Seraphine Q really when you're fixated on so much stuff. So your Q being easier to land is going to be quite nice. Also cooldown going down by two seconds is also significant again in order to get more double casts off. Mana cost going down earlier points. Damage also going up. And uh, maximum damage amp based on missing health is also going up too. So Q is becoming quite potent uh, as a damaging option if you are playing support. W also getting quite an interesting buff here too. 28 second cooldown all the way down to 22 with uh, with that one point. But uh, if you do max your W, it's actually worse off on terms of the actual cooldown reduction. Uh, but the shield value has been increased minorly as well. So... Um, but the uh, movement speed has also been slightly reduced. So I'd probably say like overall, this W is probably not necessarily something you might not want to max like straight away, but it's definitely like a, still like a second good option still to W max. It just won't be as potent as five points in W as what it used to be, but it's still like decent. E also um, getting like a uh, cooldown per level increased from 10 to 11 though, and it goes down to nine. Uh, mana cost also reduced generally across the board, um, so that's pretty nice too. So with the mana growth issues, like mana, mana shouldn't be as much of an issue. I think they might be trying to make it so that Seraphine can not necessarily have to buy a Seraph's Embrace every game. But you probably will end up buying one anyway, because Assassins do too much damage anyway. Uh, e damage also going up uh, on the first point, but that does fall off a little bit later on in terms of base damage. But AP ratio is going up significantly by 15%. Slow duration going down minorly, but increasing more as you get more points than that. Uh, mini damage also going down just once again hit the AP carry. Uh, and then also this ultimate has been nerfed. Uh, so damage is reduced on your ultimate. And also the uh, cooldown reduction, well, you got, it's not going to come off cooldown as quickly on the later stages. And thank you for the follow during a, a tier session, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so yeah so seraphine the, the gobbledygook here is in my opinion you're probably going to be wanting to put three points in queue to do harassment in lane should have some very similar numbers to if you were doing that anyway in the first place and then you're going to want to move into a either an enchanter-esque type role 
or you can go into a more damaging type role by doing e second. So if you want to play kind of like AB carry Seraphine, you could probably just like maybe do max Q and then go into E. Otherwise, if you want to go enchanter root three points in Q, two or three points in Q, and then max W, and then you might want to max your E third uh, just to get the more slow uh, rate coming through. Um, if you wanted to go maybe super enchanter build, maybe you do like three points in E and then max W and then come back and max your E again. So you got the 1.5 second slow. There's a lot of like little things here that you can do to change up the build. I'm sure there's going to be lots of variations of Seraphine support just because there are so many different benefits from maxing um, the abilities in different orders, especially compared to a lot of champions in the game. You should have like the third spell that you upgrade is kind of like whatever. But here, Seraphine actually has a lot of options, so it's going to be interesting to see what Seraphine support players actually do with this after the first week or so and see kind of where the meta kind of is because uh, I think the slow increase here is pretty interesting, but also the damage amp on the Q is also pretty interesting too. So the Q and the E are definitely more interesting than the W here, in my opinion. So we could start seeing some AP carry Seraphine in the, uh, well, AP Seraphine support. There you go. Got there in the end. Going down into the stuffs, there's no more champion changes from what I remember. Yeah, so Celestial Opposition is uh, slightly getting nerfed. Um, so cooldown is going down by 18 seconds. Uh, the slow duration is going down. Um, wait, why do they say... No, they're buffing Celestial Opposition. I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, I promise. All right. I promise I'm okay. I know I didn't sleep on the weekend doing the, the challenge if you were there, but I'm okay. Celestial position is getting buffed, okay. Uh, minor buff increase from 20 to 18 seconds. Uh, slow duration going up by uh, 0.5 seconds and slow strength going up by 10%. Okay, let me just think if that changes anything that I've done on my to list already. I don't think that does anyway. I think Celestial Opposition at first, on the very first patch, it seemed like that was to go to tank item. But Slay ended up being slightly better. Slay nerfs are coming through now. Um, I still feel like this is a very like weird um, item to take because it's very easy to pop off someone. It's like no different, like a Malzahar passive. I think if you're playing a particularly squishy tank like maybe Rakan and you're going into maybe non-tanky items, you can maybe benefit from something like Celestial Opposition. Um, I probably wouldn't still buy this on Enchanters. I'd probably lean in towards Remaker still, especially with Dreammaker being buffed. But yeah, Celestial Opposition is kind of like in a, in a little bit of a weird space right now. I don't know how much this really affects it, but it's nice to see it getting a buff because it did feel kind of weak. Dreammaker uh, Blue Bubble Damage Reduction um, is going down, um, but then does dramatically scale through the game. So the same with the, uh, the Purple uh, Bubble Damage. Is also going up significantly. So if this is like level six number here is the 50, level six number here is the 75. So it does scale quite rapidly as you get up. So um, I don't know what kind of level here matches up to what it used to be, but I would have to guess around about level 11 it would match up. So pre level 11, might, this Dream Maker would be slightly weaker than what it was before. But then after that, it should be stronger. So in particularly the longer games, especially if you're hitting like the 13 minute mark, this Dream Maker should be significantly stronger, um, which is nice to see. I think the early points and stuff, yeah, it's going to suck a little bit on those early trades up between when you're completing the Dream Maker, which is going to be like round about that level six or seven mark. I think you probably won't feel it too much. Um, once you get into the bigger fights, that's when it's going to become more important. And then the bigger fights in the mid and late game are the game changers, really, most of the time. So having more power for free for those bigger team fight kind of situations, I think, uh, isn't a bad thing and um, should actually increase your win rate a little bit. A little bit. Just a tiny, tiny little bit. Uh, Frozen Heart is getting nerfed. Frozen Heart's been pretty good item, I think, for a lot of tank supports, and that's been nerfed, unfortunately, as well. So, uh, 2,400 to 2,500, and a little bit uh, armor re reduction there, too. So, yeah, very, it was a very, well, I mean, it's still decent in terms of a support tank item, 
um, but you might want to think about a different armor item in order to facilitate that, especially if the enemy team really hasn't got that much auto attacking. So you get more pun you get more punished basically there if you're just buying it generically. Uh, and then here we go, they have the Soul to Slay. It's quite a significant nerf, if I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, you got a 20 to 30 second cooldown uh, on the Slay. Always for that 20 seconds was already quite strong, like quite long, sorry, already. Uh, bonus movement speed also getting nerfed. Uh, bonus health, 7% of maximum health, being going down to flat health again. I think it used to be flat health, and then I think they buffed it to max health, and then Freak then got Grandmaster and said no one else can get Grandmaster, so... Put it back down to uh, the base numbers. So, yeah, I don't foresee. I think these nerfs are quite off putting, honestly, in picking up slays. So, I can imagine next patch or the patch after they'll look at buffing slay again once they realize that no one's going to want to buy it, especially with a 30 second cooldown. Um, so, yeah, I think I think generally tanks will be leaning more into the opposition just because it's, it's going to feel so unsatisfying having a 30 second cooldown. On the, on the support item overall. Other than that, I don't really think there's anything else to mention. Let's jump into the, uh, the tier list. And in the tier list, once I pop it back up, we have a couple of champions that have managed to slip a little bit. They have been more nerfs, I'd say, this patch than buffs. Also some adjustments going into the, uh, the last patch. So, one of the things I will say I wasn't 100% fully accurate with was the Lulu. I felt like the Lulu buffs on numbers from the previous patch were looking pretty good, uh, but it seems like still AD carries aren't able to play with a Lulu in the ELO brackets we're aiming for. I think Lulu's actually doing all right in Master Plus. It's just below that. Um, AD carries just can't fully utilize Lulu, I'm afraid, so... Uh, I did put her in tier 3 before. She's now, now been moved down into tier 4. Uh, Brand has been moved down from tier 2 to tier 3. I still think he's going to be like a perfectly fine AP option. Especially if you're iron. Especially if you're bronze. Especially if you're silver. After that he'll start falling off more now though. But like before this patch. In the previous patch Brand was probably viable in gold. And then you should have been looking at Zyra. I'd say like start looking at Zyra if you're in gold now. Maybe even Silver, look at playing Zyra. Um, very niche cases where Brand is better than Zyra, and that's like very high health champions on the enemy team. Like I'd say like, like Cho'Gath and someone else kind of beefy in the jungle maybe or something like that. Um, AP carry. So the bar changes uh, came through last patch as well, and it kind of shook up his uh, kind of build path. Didn't really seem to do a huge amount in changing his win rates in the iron to emerald brackets um, build changes were not really coming through anyway i think there were some ap builds kind of trying to seeping seeping through but nothing really still being solidified just yet so i have to kind of keep an eye on that one and see if anyone can cook a decent bard build but for now i think it's just like an average still like tier three still like doing okay but nothing too crazy uh seraphine though um is one that i did move up uh seraphine support used to be tier five so she's now tier 3. So I would say it's a significant buff overall to support Seraphine coming through. Uh, we'll see how long that lasts. Um, but yeah, she was extremely weak as support. Um, you were kind of trolling, honestly, if you're playing Seraphine support. Uh, if you were able to still win with Seraphine support, then it's more a testament to you rather than the champion. But yeah, if you used to like playing Seraphine support, definitely give it a go and see how it feels. Also let me know in the comments. Uh, if it's if it feels good enough, I will play Seraphine support this patch. I will do it. I will do it for the content. Okay. Ooh, the things I do for you guys. Um, tier two. We don't really have a massive amount of adjustment here. Um, I nearly put Nami into tier three. If I recall, I think Dream Maker buff is interesting enough to keep her there. Um, Soraka got buffed in the previous patch. I'm surprised her win rate didn't go higher than what it was but she's still in a healthy situation uh so it's decent tier two pick here still um maokai i still feel like his nerfs aren't enough i know solstice slay is getting enough but people are just going to go celestial position i don't think it's going to make a huge difference really in terms of him um i think he's like yes he's got nerf but i still think like people are going to play him and i think people are still going to do quite well on him 
And then going up into tier one, you actually have like the exact same tier one picks. It's kind of really weird where it hasn't touched like any of these champions. You could even argue that Janna and Sona got buffed because of the Dream Maker um, and because the Solstice Slay got nerfed on some of the engaged supports. Um, Zyra, very, very good pick uh, across all the ELO brackets that we're focusing on. Teemo is actually better than Zyra in bronze. Teemo is actually the best pick at the moment, I think, in bronze. So if you really just wanted to dominate in bronze and silver, just pay Teemo support. It's, it's really fun. Um, yeah, I highly recommend that. And the best tank engaged still, in my opinion, is Leona. And she didn't get nerfed massively this patch. Yes, Souls to Slay would impact her slightly, but... Um, with Maokai finding it harder now to do the point click engage, um, yes, Leona isn't as easy to engage because Maokai is literally point and click, but the amount of extra damage that Leona provides, the amount of extra tankiness, um, more snappy instant casts on her ulti as well. I think she's severely underrated right now, and I think she's very, very good. Uh, I just don't think anyone's. I think the Maokai also has kind of like overshadowed it a little bit and people kind of kind of forgot about Leona, but I actually think she's she's really good right now. So if you are worried about Maokai getting hit by more nerfs, and he probably will, look at Leona as your tank engage for the season so far. So all the best berries, take care. Um I will be cooking a video on the uh, on the week-long challenge I was doing for getting pentakills, so keep an eye on, on that. Be sure to, to, to subscribe if you want to see more support videos. Sorry, my my words are struggling to come out my mouth. I've been awake for 15 hours. Uh, yeah, all the best. Take care. I'll be streaming on Twitch uh, tomorrow with a new patch. So if you're around, uh, starting around about 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, UK time, I'll be streaming for about 6 hours. And I might do an evening stream as well for all you Americans. Uh, yeehaw and all that. And um, yes, howdy. <laughs> I'll be streaming tomorrow twice. So... Watch me on twitch.tv slash Billsberry. All the best. Take care. Bye.